Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Where the 99 Lead. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and Where the 99 Lead, it's a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, and of course, the 99, those historic 99 steps that lead to the University of Pikeville campus, but also lead from campus back into the community and into the world. Many students may never walk to 99, or perhaps it's one of the newest traditions at the university. Everyone makes a symbolic journey up those 99 steps to beginning their student life at the University of Pikeville. That's what we're talking today, student life at the University of Pikeville. And Colin McCoy, Student Life Coordinator for Student Housing, joins us today, a returning guest. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Andrew. I'm happy to be here. We're going to talk student housing, a challenging affair for anyone involved because of the growth of the university. Uh, but we'll talk about that but first, a little background on you. For those that don't know Colin McCoy, give us a little background. Where you come from, how you arrived at the university, and your backstory. So, of course, I've, like I said, I've been here before. Um, I grew up in Martin County, Kentucky, uh, not too far from here. I came to the University of Pikeville on a soccer scholarship. I was, um, I kind of thought that was my dream, was to play soccer here and enjoy that career, but uh, my path kind of dwindled a little bit. Got involved with Student Government Association, um, spiritual life on campus, a lot of different things. Realized I really had a passion for higher ed. I was an education major, so instead of being in the high school, I decided that my career path was going to take me in a different way. And now I'm here at the university, full-time employee. I'm happy to be here. I'm really excited to see where this journey can take me. There you go. Colin McCoy out of Martin County. And also joined today by a first-time guest, Jordan Byers, Student Life Coordinator. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andrew. Happy to be here. It's same deal. We're going to talk student life and all things involving what you guys do on a daily basis with student life. But give us uh, your background, uh, where you come from and how you arrived here. Sure. Um, I'm originally from Grundy, Virginia, just an hour oh. over the mountains. Almost the golden <laughs> way. It's true. Uh, 20, uh, class of 2010 graduate from Grundy High School. Um, I went to UVA Wise for five years, graduated there in 2015. I uh, got my bachelor's degree in psychology. While I was there, uh, very similar to Colin's experience, got involved with the Student Government Association, Greek life, anything and everything student life related. Um, and I'm, as I was graduating, I tried to figure out where I wanted to go, how I wanted uh, my next step to look. And as I kind of reflected, I saw you know, I could make a career out of what I had enjoyed during my five years in undergrad. And sure. um, as I was graduating, a position came available here in uh, student services and I applied and I've been here since July 20th of 2015. And it's been an awesome ride and I'm excited to see what this year is gonna bring for Very us. Very good. Uh, Grundy, Virginia, of course, Buchanan County, Martin County. We've got some mountain boys here at Student <laughs> Life at the University of Pikeville. And that's what the University of Pikeville is all about, Central Appalachia. Yep. Uh, no matter where you come from, Central Appalachia uh, is a certain region that uh, we all speak the same language. Uh, Jordan, uh, the university sponsors many activities to enhance student life. Every student's experience in college is different yes. based on the experiences that they're provided, the opportunities that they're given. How does being involved and act active on campus improve the college experience for those students? Well, a lot of what students' college experience is relates to what they engage in outside of the classroom. You know, they enroll full-time 12 credit hours up to 18, sometimes 20 credits. So they're in, in, in the class a large amount of time um, throughout the day, but a lot of what they remember when they you know, walk back down the 99 into the real world is those opportunities that they had with their um, cohorts outside of the classroom. Sure. So getting them engaged connects them to the university um, and it, it gives them a support network to fall back on as they're going um, throughout their journey here and a network to fall back on later on um, when they're um, out and about in the workforce. So it really connects them to each other um, in ways that the classroom really doesn't provide an opportunity for. Them. As you work now as student life coordinator at UPike and you think about this question mm -hmm. and it relates to you, you're recently removed from being a student yourself. <laughs> yes. These are, these are fresh memories for you. Definitely. As you think about this question, what are some activities that improved your college experience? What are some things you were involved in that changed your college experience that may be different than anyone else's? 
Definitely. I was, I came up through the ranks of the Student Government Association. Um, our SGA was set up a little differently than the University of Pikeville's. Um, I ran for a senator at large and in that position I represented all of the students of the institution in the Senate. Um, I was the treasurer and then the vice president. So there's where I really sort of developed my drive for higher education and, and the student experience and how that relates to everyone. Um, the other piece that kind of went in with that, I served as a resident assistant um, for around two and a half years sure. when I was an undergrad. So really watching other students go through their experience, getting the opportunity to mentor them and um, help them with issues such as homesickness or time management, uh, really catering to their needs really taught me a lot about what this experience should look like and how I can help others while they're going through it. Didn't mention the classroom at all, <laughs> <laughs> but obviously a big part of Definitely. student life. But a as an RA, part. that student life on a 24-7 basis. Yes. And that truly is the experience. It, those are the experiences that we take with us uh, from a college experience, no matter where we are. Uh, Colin, as a student, also involved in UPIKE's SGA, the Student Government Association. Uh, talk about what the role is of SGA on UPIKE's campus. So, as Jordan mentioned, our SGA is a little bit different. Um, we, f my, my story for example, I came in through SGA my freshman year. Um, with us, it was, we had a small election process, but I was the only person running for my position, so obviously I got it. I was, just, I was kind of a senator at large, kind of the equivalent to what they have. and. Um, I came in, uh, basically at first what I saw, we planned a bunch of events. That's, that's what I thought at first, and that's what a lot of the students on campus think. But as I came through the ranks, I also came pretty much the same as I passed Jordan did, treasurer and then to president for me. And um, I started to realize that it's more about developing leaders to change the culture on a campus. Of course, we plan events and we give money to organizations and things like that, but and we, we, man we in a way manage the clubs and organizations on campus. Sure. But SGA is about creating the culture on campus, creating the climate. They, they decide how students are going to feel about, about events. They're going to decide what the perception is of decisions made by, for example, the president or vice president or president or provost of the university. So, Very interesting that both were involved in SGA and now both involved in the student life office at mm -hmm. the University of Pikeville. Uh, highly involved as part of your student experience and now as employees at the University of Pikeville. We talk student life today at the University of Pikeville. Jordan Byers, student life coordinator, our guest, along with Colin McCoy, student life coordinator for student housing. And uh, Jordan, uh, Colin mentioned the clubs on campus, mm -hmm. SGA acts to bring these all together. UPike offers a wide range of clubs and organizations and of course honor societies as well. Uh, tell us about some of the most popular. Some of the most popular organizations outside of the Student Government Association, that's a pretty large one in and of itself. Uh, it really engages a lot of students and has a large reach. Outside of that, our Greek life on campus, we offer two fraternities and two sororities. Um, three of those organizations are local, meaning they're specific to the University of Pikeville. Sure. Just last year, we had um, one of those local organizations go national, so they're now affiliated with the national fraternity that has campuses across the nation. Right. Um, so we have those opportunities. Um, we have several honor societies for different uh, sides of campus, our social work program, our psychology program. Um, pretty much any major has its own um, honor society. That's, that's really involved with um, the cohorts within that particular major. And then we have um, sort of pre-professional clubs, the biology club, um, those individuals who really get involved with the folks in their major and they um, kind of band together and uh, contribute their skill sets to the campus. I think of our biology club, for instance, they're very active in service learning and really giving back um, to the UPIKE community through the skill set that biology offers them. Sure. Some, uh, some great organizations, uh, clubs on campus, part of the student life experience and uh, changing that experience for each and every student that's involved. Colin, uh, UPIKE hosted several successful events this fall. 
uh, to kick off the fall semester for both uh, first-time students arriving on campus, but those returning as well. Some Tell us about some of the events that students were able to take part in. So yeah, um, that's, when I go back to my SGA experience, my, f my busiest time as SGA president was the first month or so over the summer because that's when you're planning things for Welcome Week. You're working with student services and our department to plan things like that. Um, when, to kick off the fall, we want to get people excited. I want them to be happy to be here and make them feel like that we're trying to make a difference in their lives. So we had Welcome Week, which was just a blast, including the street fair where students were, there was music playing, students were getting free things, they were playing games, just uh, amazing time. We had a comedian on campus, a lot of students attended that. Um, football games that we had uh, tailgating for the football games, things like that. Um, just a lot of different things. RAs had programs throughout the thing to get to know their floors. Um, basically, we've been nonstop since then. We had the Splash Bash uh, last week, and this was basically a big paint party where we got in the gym, sprayed paint on students, let them dance, played some music, had lights. It was one of the big, the most attended events I've ever seen at UPAC. We had about 290 students wow. who were officially checked in, and a couple more we think. So it, that was a wildly successful event for us, and we're hoping to keep the momentum going and throughout the rest of the year. Of course, students back on campus now. Uh, those first days of a semester are now in the books, but that doesn't mean that student life events uh, stop. Th those will continue through the fall semester and into the spring mm -hmm. as well. I know you guys stay busy all year long. Mm -hmm. uh, also, spiritual life on campus. It's a big part of what the University of Pikeville campus is all about. Uh, tell us about worship services that are available on campus each and every week. Yeah, so um, as most people know, I'm really close to our chaplain, Rob Music. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and he He's, he cares so much about the students. He wants things to be available every day for them, for people of every faith and every spirituality that comes to him. So let's, I, we'll, we'll go through the week. We start out our week on Sunday nights at 737 in Booth Auditorium. It's like a campus-wide worship service. We come in, have a great time. They have communion and everything. Um, Rob is usually the minister that presides over that. Um, it's a great time. We go into Monday nights. We have blessing. Hang on, hang on. Yep. Sunday night. Worship service, 7.37. It, at 7.37 p.m. in Booth Auditorium. Precisely 7.37 <laughs> p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, don't if, be early at 7.30. If you show up at 7.30, you might get some cookies. Yeah. So I don't know about that. Um, if you show up at 7.38, you, you've got <laughs> issues. But it's a highly, it's a, a highly formal worship service, isn't it? Structured with robes and uh, just all of that high church that you would expect? Uh, maybe a little different. You, know, you don't have robes around there. Um, I hear it's a little less formal, yeah. contemporary, if you will. Very, very contemporary. Um, you come in, we have some people, they wear ball shorts sometimes. I mean, you come in, you have a band that plays, they're all, you know, contemporary Christian music players, sure. so they wear their flannel and things like that, obviously. If someone so, wanted to wear a rope, we, we, would, we would be happy if they no matter what they were wearing. As long as they had clothes on, we would be happy. But it's less formal. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. it's more for college students' worship exactly. experience. Exactly. It's very, very tailored to the college student sure. experience. And most of our, worship, most of our services are. Um, Monday nights, we move into Blessed Unity of God. It's, it's even less formal. It's more of a Bible study, student-led Bible study. It's been around our campus for 12, 13 years, something like that. Um, that that's a good time. It's on Monday nights at 8.30 in the chapel. Tuesdays at 11, we have the chapel service. Right. That's formal. I mean, that's where Rob usually has a very precise plan for what's going to happen. Um, we start a new a new organization started Catholics at UPOC. Um, we do have Catholic Mass on Wednesdays at noon. Uh, Baptist Campus Ministries, Athletes in Action. There's just always something available. People of different faiths. Rob is very embracing of that. Rob is happy to try to accommodate them in any way. So uh, we have things available all the time. People just have to know about them yeah. ask about them basically and regardless of what type of uh, what what type of religious background you come from uh, there are opportunities uh, I, grew, at UPIC. I grew up in the church I know people who've never been in church a day in their life and they've gotten involved with spiritual life at UPIC so we're very open to people of all faiths I mean even if even people not of the Christian faith we're happy to try to get them connected to people of the same faith around but um yeah, very accepting, very loving community. I really, I've, I've enjoyed it throughout my years. Absolutely. Uh, Jordan Byers, Student Life Coordinator at the University of Pike Vire Guest, along with Colin McCoy, Student Life Coordinator for Student Housing. As we talk about student life, different organizations, different services provided, different ways to change the student life experience, 
for each University of Pikeville uh, student experience. Uh, and Jordan, members of the UPike family, I've had a chance to witness this firsthand. Uh, UPike family members, students, faculty, administration, staff, all working together, serving the community by volunteering throughout the region. Mm -hmm. How do students involved in clubs and organizations donate their time uh, serving the community in the region? A lot of our organizations, um, for instance, I mentioned a few minutes ago, our Greek organizations, each one of those, they have a philanthropy associated with their particular organization. Um, I know one of our organizations specifically works with Judy's Place in the community. Sure. Um, others will work with places such as Mountain Comprehensive Care, the Food Pantry, places like that. They'll go out and volunteer their, their time um, as much as they possibly can. They'll go there and just do odds and ends for the individuals running um, those places. They'll even um, do things on campus such as food drives or fundraisers to help raise awareness to those causes or to provide supplies for a particular hot spot time of year when they're in need. Sure. Um, but we're constantly looking um, as a university, um, we'll have students um, come in as, at, to our office asking, you know, do you know of any locations out in the community where we could do community service? And I'm sure there are places that we're not aware of. So we definitely encourage um, businesses or organizations in the city of Pikeville or even in Pike County um, to contact our office to let us know hey you know we would like some community service workers so we can patch our students in with them and, and get them involved. Students very involved in the community and uh, community service it has been integrated I'm not sure if it's if it's a focus from the administration mm -hmm. uh, from the university or from students themselves students seem to be so community minded uh, with UPike students. Tell you that I had an experience of witnessing this. I saw a group of UPike students and faculty that had been on a cleanup of one of our local waterways. Was this a, a couple of weeks ago? Just first week recently, of school? Okay. And it was a blitz that apparently there were students throughout the region volunteering that, that particular day. It's actually a really cool thing to start with the first year experience last year. It's called Becoming a Bear, the day of service. All freshmen are required to do a day of service in the community, or they don't pass first year studies. So it's 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 really it's really <laughs> cool. Um, they they seem to enjoy it for the most part. Yeah. I've led a couple of trips there. They're, they they go to the surrounding counties and everything. So it's sure. a great time. It really is, and, and I could see the students that were taking part in this. It wasn't something they were being forced to do. It's something that they were all in, mm -hmm. and they had bought in, and, and they were serving the community and. There they were working side by side with a member of the faculty yep. and, and all having a, a good time and the community benefiting from that service. Uh, great part of the university and uh, great to see those students and faculty working together. We talk about Greek life, life on campus, relatively new mm -hmm. to the University of Pikeville. It hasn't been there long. We've got three locals, one national now. Uh, Colin, uh, tell us about the fraternities and sororities. Uh, a little more detail, what are, they, what are their names, but more importantly, what are their roles mm -hmm. on campus? So uh, when I was a student, I was a member of Delta Alpha Lambda, which was one of the local fraternities that turned into Alpha Kappa Lambda, so the national fraternity. Sure. Um, I was involved with that. The other fraternity is Gamma Sigma Chi. It's, one of the, it's the local fraternity now. Um, they have their own housing in Gillespie Hall on, on our campus. Uh, Gammas have one floor and the Alphas have the other floor. Um, we have Delta Delta Nu, which is one of the sororities on campus, one of the local sororities, and then Zeta Omega Chi, which is another one of our local sororities on campus. Um, my, theory behind, my theory behind the fraternities and sororities is that they basically give students purpose. They give them something to be in that's bigger than themselves. Not all students enjoy SGA, enjoy being a part. I mean, sure. uh, not all students are always looking for a spiritual organization to be a part of or an honor society or things like that. But they're looking for people to hang out with and people just to be their friend, basically. And uh, that that's the most important thing with our Greek life on campus, in my opinion. But, of course, like Jordan said, they all have their philanthropies. They do. There are many times as a student I went to Judy's place and just helped clean up just because we had a free day and we wanted to help out as much as we can. So uh, that they just give students a sense of purpose, a sense of, and the ability to be something bigger than themselves when they may not fit in. They may not fit in in these other organizations. Uh, just another way to enhance the student experience mm -hmm. 
at the University of Pikeville. We talk student life today. Jordan Vire is student life coordinator, uh, our guest and uh, first time guest, new to the university. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been here less than six months now. Well, I've been here since July 2015. Okay, okay. A yeah. little, a little uh, right out of year. Yes. Right out of yes. year. And uh, uh, Jordan, of course, we, uh, we talk about being active on campus. Obviously, during your student life, you've developed some leadership uh, <laughs> capabilities. Colin, likewise. I've seen Colin mm -hmm. as he's changed and developed over his student, uh, his time as a student and now as an employee at the university. Uh, he developed leadership opportunities, both involved in SGA, but being involved in activities in organizations on campus, they lead to leadership opportunities. Definitely. What are some ways students gain leadership experiences as a student at UPike? Each one of the student organizations are just that, student-led, student-ran. So each organization will have its own executive leadership team comprised of typically a president, vice president, treasurer, secretary, those, those typical offices that run um, organizations. Um, outside of the executive leadership team for these organizations are committees that, you know, I think of the Greek organizations, they'll appoint committee, uh, committee chairpersons to um, head up initiatives for particular events or to run certain sides of the organization. As students progress and gain seniority in their, in their um, organizations, they're given those opportunities to sort of lead their peers and it really allows them to develop a skill set that's transferable to their time outside the university when that time happens um, where they're leading meetings of their peers, they're having to hold their peers accountable, um, they're responsible for large fundraisers or large social events where they have to work out logistics and things of that nature. So there's opportunities for students to get involved in any niche, so to speak, that they associate themselves with um, in terms of leadership in their organizations. Uh, new experiences and being involved. Mm -hmm. If you go to class, go back to the dorm, sit there and study for 16 hours a day, oh. <laughs> uh, you're probably not developing those leadership no. uh, experiences and, and f creating those experiences. Most students, are, we're finding, are involved in mm -hmm. some way in finding their place on campus uh, and providing uh, opportunities for advanced e experiences. Uh, Jordan, what are some of the more popular student life events on campus throughout the year? We've talked about a few, mm -hmm. but talk about some of the other events that are coming up and some that are, are popular. Sure. We always start our year off with Welcome Week. There's a slew of events that occur in that time frame. Colin has already discussed a few. Um, as we go through the semester, um, we don't have events every single day, um, but we, we have events on a, on a weekly basis. Um, we try to program on the weekends as well. Our um, student life assistants, Colin and I each supervise a, a, a team of student life assistants who are in charge of floors across campus. Um, they program and create events um, for each of their floor communities to come out and um, enjoy each other's community, um, develop socially, as well as to learn certain skill sets that fall within our model outside the classroom. We have Cassie Thacker, who is over student engagement and leadership development for the university. She does a wonderful job of programming um, our, our more large scale all campus events. Those things incorporate the, the hypnotist, um, uh, comedians, karaoke nights, open mic nights, those, those types of events that garner typically our residential and commuter populations alike. Very good, a lot of uh, events that students can be involved in outside of class, mm -hmm. outside of possibly uh, uh, those students that are student athletes and uh, those extracurricular activities that take up so much time, but uh, not just uh, the uh, intercollegiate athletics, intramural sports, a big part of campus as well. Uh, Colin, uh, they're always popular, no matter what campus you're at, intramural sports are popular. For those that are participating, but even for those intercollegiate athletes who become fans of the intramural teams, it's a great way to stay involved. Tell us about the intramural programs and uh, maybe some, some sports that are offered. So yeah, um, the intramural program has actually it went through some changes in the past couple of years, so now we're trying to build it back up to where it was when I was a younger student. Um, 
And, for example, two weeks we're starting football. Um, in real flag football, it's usually a big hit throughout the year. Sure. Um, and it's great. Like, like you mentioned, some of the athletes that are on the actual football team get involved as fans. A lot of them coach these intramural yeah. teams, which is awesome to see. Sometimes you'll see them come out in complete suits and everything else to sure. coach an intramural flag <laughs> football team. Um, but, yeah, we have flag football starting here soon. It's going to be a full season, go most of the semester. Next semester we will have intramural basketball, five-on-five, five, full-court basketball. Yeah. Um, we're going to have day tournaments. We're going to have a couple of shorter seasons throughout, like kickball, wiffle ball, volleyball, dodgeball. Have all, they've, they've, <laughs> they've, they've expressed interest in all of those sports. So, um Basically, if students feel there's a sport that they want to see on our campus, right. we want them to come talk to us about it. We would love to try to accommodate any way because we know students need that stress relief or they need to be mobile somehow, whether they're a student athlete or not. <laughs> Intramural sports are popular on, on most campuses, and it's a way that uh, maybe someone that was an athlete in high mm -hmm. school to continue to play a sport, or maybe it's just dodgeball. And <laughs> yeah. We're reverting back to our <laughs> elementary days. Uh, it's a great way for students to be involved, be active as well, mm -hmm. get away from the books for a little bit, and uh, get a little breather from, from that part of student life. Uh, Colin, I know s social media, uh, a big part of the University of Pikeville. Mm -hmm. Every office, every department, everyone's involved in social media. Uh, how do you keep students involved through social media about activities on campus? So in the, pa in the past few months, the end of last semester into this semester, I think social media has actually become, ha is actually becoming our best way to advertise for students, not just with our department, but every department. Because um, we, sometimes students read flyers, sometimes they don't. Social media, students are on it constantly. So they'll see that there's a What's Up Wednesday event. They'll see that there's a f basketball game for them to go to or something like that. So uh, for, us, it, for us, our social media accounts, we have a Twitter account that we give updates all, all the time. We're tweeting, we retweet a lot from the student services account also um, to give updates about events that are happening on campus, things for students to get involved in, reminders, things like that. That's at Upike Life on Twitter. And then on Instagram, we post pictures of just students hanging out, having a good time. We want them to feel like they're being recognized sure. for being involved. And that's at, that's at Upike Student Life. So um, social media is such a big part of our department is such a big part of advertisement nowadays that that's the, the best way to reach students in any way, really. That's where the students are. That's where they are, yeah. On, on social media. Go to them. Don't expect them to come to us. <laughs> if you're not there on social media, you're not going to reach the students because mm -hmm. that's, that's where they are. Uh, we're winding down this edition of Where the 99 Lead. Today we talk about uh, student life at the University of Pike Bowen. Uh, student life coordinator Jordan Vyer is one of our guests. And Jordan, uh, homecoming is coming up. Uh, what are some activities that students can look forward to for homecoming this year? This is going to be a very special homecoming at the University of Pikeville. Homecoming this year will coincide with the installation of Burton Webb, um, formal installation of Burton Webb as our president. His sure. inauguration is that week. Um, starting on that Wednesday night, we will have um, U Pike's Got Talent, followed by that Thursday, the lighting of the 99, the lighting of campus, which formally starts homecoming on our campus. Um, the installation of President Webb on that Friday, um, followed by um, Saturday, the homecoming game, Go Bears, mm -hmm. and um, the crowning of the homecoming king and queen and a dance to follow afterward. So definitely a packed week for us. We're very excited to, to get into October and to enjoy it. A lot of great activities that take place in and around homecoming. Yes. at the University of Pike, but we look forward to this year's event. Uh, Colin McCoy, Student uh, Life Coordinator for Student Housing, our guest. Thanks for being with us again. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy it. We look forward to having you back. Jordan Byers, uh, my first opportunity to say welcome to you, Pike. Thank you. And uh, great to have you. We'll look forward to having you back as well. Jordan Virus, Student Life Coordinator at the University of Pikeville. You've been tuned to Where the 99 Lead, a program brought to you by the University of Pikeville, the leading university of Central Appalachia. Thanks for tuning in.